Hi, my name is Zach and you're watching Bite Size. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made this motion activated light switch. This is actually part two in a series about relays. In the first video, I talked about what a relay is and how they work. In this video, I'm going to dive a little bit deeper and actually open one up to show you how it works inside. Relays are especially good at switching high voltage and high current loads, like basically anything that you plug into the wall. To get a better understanding of how a relay works, it might be helpful to open one up. I took a utility knife and cut off the plastic shell one piece at a time. This allows you to see the different parts. The main part inside a relay is the coil. You can see here the tiny copper wire wrapped around a plastic cylinder. When a voltage is applied across the two ends of the coil, a magnetic field is created. Directly above the coil is the spring-loaded armature and contacts. When a voltage is applied to the coil, the armature reacts to the magnetic field and moves to a closed position. This closes the circuit and allows electricity to flow between the armature terminal and the contact terminal. When voltage is removed from the coil, the magnetic field breaks down and the spring returns the armature back to its open position. This breaks the circuit and prevents electricity from flowing between the two terminals. The relay I'm going to use for my motion activated outlet is installed on a circuit board with a transistor which gives the signal we feed into it a little extra muscle. Usually relays in this configuration require a voltage below some threshold to actually turn on the relay. I was curious to see what this threshold voltage was so I connected a variable power supply and swept the voltage from 0 to 5 volts. I found out that this relay needs a voltage above 3.9 volts to turn off. Any voltage above this value will open the relay, and any voltage below this value will close the relay. Now that I have a firm understanding of this relay, I'm going to solder some wires to it so that I can supply power and a signal to it. You can get really creative in the ways that you trigger or turn on and off the relay. I dug through my box of electronics and found a PIR sensor. A PIR stands for pyroelectric or passive infrared, which basically is just a motion sensor. This type of motion sensor is found everywhere. I'm sure you've seen one in either a security system or some sort of outdoor lighting to detect motion. I bought these PIR sensors on eBay for about a dollar each. This motion sensor has three signals on it. The first two are VCC and ground, which will accept a supply voltage between 3.3 and 12 volts DC. I'm going to be powering this motion activated outlet using four AA batteries, which will produce a voltage around six volts. The third pin on the motion sensor is the signal output. When no motion is detected, this signal reads about zero volts. As soon as motion is detected by the sensor, this pin will read about 3.3 volts or 3.4 volts DC. I hope to connect the output signal of the motion sensor into the input signal of the relay and trigger it directly like that. But if you remember earlier, I was measuring the input voltage range of the relay and figured out that it will turn on with any voltages that are less than 3.9 volts. This means that if I connect the motion sensor directly to the input of the relay, the relay will always be on because the output signal of the motion sensor never gets above 3.9 volts. The relay needs a signal voltage of above 3.9 volts to turn off. Even if I could solve the voltage issue, I still have an inverse logic problem. When the motion detector detects motion, the relay would turn off, and when there is no motion, the relay would turn back on. This of course is the opposite behavior of what I'm going for. I've actually found a pretty simple solution that involves an N-channel MOSFET and two 10K resistors. 
I wanted to make sure that my idea to solve this problem would work, so I used an online simulator called Every Circuit to test my idea. When motion is detected, a 3.3 volt signal from the motion sensor will be sent to the gate of the MOSFET, which will turn it on. If we connect the relay input to the drain, the zero volts will turn the relay on. When motion is not detected, the 10K pull-down resistor brings the gate to zero volts, which will turn off the MOSFET. The 10K pull-up resistor on the drain will send a six volt signal to the relay, turning it off. Once I was confident with the simulation, I soldered the circuit using real components onto the motion sensor. With the soldering done, it was time to move on to creating an outlet to plug appliances into. I used this extension cord and cut one of the wires at a point in the middle of the cord. It should go without saying, but if you're going to do this, make sure the cord is not plugged into the wall. Please be smart and safe. The motion sensor works and it turns on the light plugged into the extension cord. I adjusted the time duration and sensitivity of the motion sensor so that the light stays on for about 30 seconds after detecting motion. Now that I've got the electronics working, I figured it would be good to put them in some sort of enclosure. So I'm going to open up Fusion 360 and design some sort of enclosure for the electronics and 3D print it on my printer. I tested the finished project by plugging in my living room lamp as well as a fan. You could plug in pretty much anything to this motion activated outlet as long as it doesn't draw more than the 10 amp rating of the relay. If you have a good idea of how you would use this project, I'd be interested in hearing about it.
As you can see, relays are really useful for turning things on and off. One project I've had in mind for a long time is to create an auto switch for my shop vac in my garage. I use a shop vac in my garage for dust collection and they attach directly to my tools. But the idea is to get a current sensor and a relay that will measure the current of the tool when I turn it on and automatically turn on the shop vac and suck up all the dust while I'm using the tool. And then as soon as I turn off the tool, the shop vac will automatically turn off about 10 seconds later. I'm hoping to make this project actually pretty soon, so if that sounds interesting, stay tuned. So that pretty much wraps up this video. If you haven't seen my video about the $5 Wi-Fi smart switch, be sure to click here. And if you want to know more about the 3D printer I used, watch this video. I've got a lot of cool project videos like this in the works. If that's something you're interested in, be sure to click this subscribe button and YouTube will start recommending you more videos like this. I'll see you next time. that on.